Welcome to the J Train Podcast. It's J Train Jared Free coming to you live from Boston, Massachusetts. That's right. Every Monday, we take your emails, your stories, your questions. We read them every week. I want to thank you for sending in your questions, for listening to this great show. Keep sending them in. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. You, you, you can see we're on. We're once again in Zoom world. I'm in Boston taping this. I had some schedule changes this week, um, but I want to thank everyone. I'm, I'm taping this before the Boston shows, but I want to thank everyone who came to the Boston shows. What an amazing – it's already an amazing weekend for me. I'm staying in a nice hotel, if you can see on YouTube. Um, I'm going to the Celtics game. There's a whole number of things that – when I, and I'm from here, so it's like a very – it's a it's a beautiful thing, and uh, I want to thank everyone who came to the show and brought friends and all that good stuff. And if you want to hear more about it, I got a whole week of stories. I'm Patreon. Um, it'll be out today. I do every Monday coffee with J Train. I've got a bevy. I've never even used that word before. A bevy felt right. I have a I have a number of stories from this week that are just crazy, and I think it's probably because it's New York Comedy Festival, which. Everyone kind of says like, oh, what is that? It's not a real festival. Uh, but everyone's in town, which is why today, even though they're in town, we're doing this over Zoom. I'm very excited about today's guest. First time on the J Train podcast, hilarious comedian, Ali Makovsky. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. How are you? What's happening? You're in town for the New York Comedy Festival. Aren't I right? People say like, but but then, then I look back at this week and I go, all these people have been around. It is something. Yeah, I have been known to say that it's not a real festival, <laughs> right. um, but yeah, it is nice because like even though there's a lot of comics from L.A. here who I see all the time, like there's something fun about seeing them in New York and going to a diner and like seeing right. New York friends. Um, I just I think my one my one qualm with the okay. quote unquote festival is there needs to be an all day, all night hub that people can go to between shows. That way, if you're kind of loner vibes, you have a place to check in, see what friends might be there, go somewhere else. You're right. That's what seems to be missing from the New York Comedy Festival because we every year I hear it's happening and then I end up on a show and someone goes, it's a festival show. And I go, oh, really? I had no clue. And then... I'll, like I was at Gotham last night and it was packed and I'm like seeing people I haven't seen in like a year and they're like and I'm like what's going on they're like it's the festival and I'm like we need a central hub just put a tent in Times Square that we can go get some water at and see some people yeah there was supposed to I guess there's like the Hard Rock Hotel is the place this year but it was like there was just a party last night that closed at two or it closed, I think, at twelve thirty, and that's not comedian time. That's oh, and you know, there were tw- there were shows that were happening at eleven thirty. Right, right. It's uh, I I guess we need a central figure to be at the at, at the. We need to we need someone to yell at, and that's the thing. We have no one to to go complain to. Exactly. Except here to the ether. So I'm excited to have you on. Where are you from, Ali? I we've met. Uh, everyone should go follow Ali. Hilarious comedian. At not Allie Mac on Instagram, TikTok, all that good stuff. Uh, she's got shows coming up in D.C., Philly, Illinois, Austin, AllieMakovsky.com. Where are you from? Uh, we, we've we met, but in passing, kind of. Yeah, I'm from Long Beach, California, originally. So you're a Californian. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a I'm like a proper SoCal girl. It, it, do you feel that way? Do you feel, no, do you identify as SoCal girl? You know, that is a, that is a type. Like there's people that like go to LA, become LA, you know, long beach type of thing. But how do you, how do you feel about that? Cause I'm, yeah. I'm as Northeast as they come. And I didn't realize how Northeast I was until I met people who are like, you're the most Northeast person I've ever met. I didn't have that experience. I didn't realize I was like super SoCal because I picture SoCal as like San Diego. Interesting. <laughs> so I never like included myself in that. But then when I hear when I'll like tell stories from high school and I'll be like, yeah, everyone who was popular in my high school was like a surfer, Christian youth group attendee. I'm like, right. oh, that's very SoCal. Um, but I don't. 
not that I don't take pride in it, but I will say when people think that I'm from the East Coast, I take it as the highest compliment I could ever receive. Really? Yeah. What what is it? What do you what do you think when someone says that? What do you think they're saying about you? Because I, I would hear when someone says you're from the Northeast, I'm like, I'm loud. I'm annoying. Uh, I'm like uh, a piece of shit. Like I, I get that feeling from them. I think like when when people say like, oh, are you from are you from the East Coast? It, it, there's something that's like you feel like a real person. Oh, OK, they're, they're, like you, just you have like substance. You, You've worked real jobs. You have like real life experience. You're not just like at the beach every day getting a tan. Right. You're like dealing with stuff. I mean, I have sometimes people will look at me and go, oh, you're from Long Island. And I'm like, that's anti-Semitic. Like, I'm like, that is a Jewish thing. I, I And like, oh, you're from Jersey, right? They do this thing where they like, they'll say they out themselves almost. Yeah, I um I was with someone I was with someone who was telling a story and they didn't realize that they said that they were being like a little bit racist. Okay. <laughs> and so it was one of those things I wasn't in a position to say anything. So I was just like, what does that mean? Like trying to ask I was like therapizing it where I'm like, maybe if I ask them enough questions about the story, they're gonna come to the conclusion themselves. Like, um, like, oh, I am a little off. You know, I, yeah, I realize like, the error of their ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, I have done that. We're like, where are you from? Or where they're like, you're from Long Island, right? And I'm like, why would you think that? I would say that, but that's because I don't have enough knowledge. And I would assume because of just your voice, you would be from Long Island. Okay. Well, we're starting out with insults. Uh, so they, yeah, I guess I, I give up. I mean, at this point, I was thinking about today because I'm in Boston. I grew up like Needham, a town outside of Boston. I, you know, you get reflective, but I've lived in New York 15 years. Like, it's like. That's a life, you know, that's a that's a that's a high school kid. You know, I've lived in New York long enough to like become a little New Yorky, which is a, a huge insult to Boston people. Boston people talk about New Yorkers in a way that like like I remember growing up there was like Target opened. Target opened in the Boston area. And everyone would say they're like, "Well, in New York there are a bunch of snobs. They call it Target." Like that was like a rumor that I think we just started on our own about them just to feel like we were right about them, you know? Yeah. I mean, my mom calls Target Target and it is like a snobby thing. <laughs> it's pretty snob. Yeah. That's a, so your mom is the, the cartoon we invented. Yeah. She also, I'm doing a joke about this. I don't want to like say a joke verbatim, sure. but she like, she loves to tell people that she's never been to Walmart because she thinks it makes her like sound bougie right. and it's like we don't live anywhere near a walmart also it, yeah and it's such a thing like i don't need to know that like it, it, we can fix this this isn't interesting we can fi yeah. i i was doing a joke about a woman on a pro a dating profile she says she's never eaten fish and it's like you, you why are you telling me just go eat fish just go did you match with my mom? Because she also will brag about not having ever tried certain foods where I'm like, that doesn't sound cool. Just try right. you're, an, you're a full grown adult. Try an avocado. Yeah, you can go to you can go to Walmart right now. Bite into an avocado. Get two done in one shot. Yeah. So insane. Well, listen, everyone go follow Allie at, at, at not Allie Mac, Allie Makovsky here with us. Uh, people, we're going to get to your emails, jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. If you're listening right now, I'm coming to Miami, Virginia Beach, and just add it to the calendar. Ring that bell. Woo, woo, woo. Oklahoma City. I'm coming back, Oklahoma City. Last time I was there, the power went out in the club, and I didn't do the Saturday night shows. It felt so weird to go somewhere and not do, like, the Saturday night. You know when you do a weekend? Yeah. Did you did you have a Sunday show? No. F Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday they were like the the power went off. I was like I kind of put on my Instagram. I was like I'm going to go eat at this bar if someone wants to say hi. Like people came to the bar. So, I'm going to be back in Oklahoma City um uh jaredfree.com for tickets. Uh let's get to the emails. You ready? I'm ready. I also have a little beginning question for you. Please. 
Have you seen the show Couples Therapy? Um, I have not. Is that the one where they're like in the therapy room with them? Yeah, I just I was watching it on my flight over here. Mm. It is a roller coaster. It's an adventure. It's so good. And now I'm like, I can't wait to um, be the therapist. Well, yeah, you get to be the, you know, the, and we are not professionals. We are not even experts. We're just a couple of idiots, you know, talking out of our ass. But we're going to try and help these people. I, I think I'm a professional. Are you? Okay, so you're a professional. I am not. So let's do it. Uh, JTrainPodcast.com. Family as neighbors. Okay. JTrain, feather, feather. I have a unique situation on my hands. My husband and I are very happy in California. Okay, a couple of, couple of uh, Californians. But it's expensive. My husband's parents have a few rental properties in San Diego and offered to sell us one of them at a reasonable price. The property is the only house they own. Others are condos and has a view of the ocean, but it's next door to them. My husband is considering it, but I am naturally most concerned about having any boundaries with living next door to my in-laws. My husband's dad travels quite a bit for work, and I notice his mom reaches out a lot when his dad is gone and wants us to keep her company, so I'm concerned what will happen when we can't make up an excuse since we live next door. Part of me feels like this could be a recipe of, for disaster, but curious to see if, if you see it differently. Thank you so much in advance. Ali Makovsky, what do you think? Did you live near your family? What what was your dynamic growing up? I mean, I lived I lived with my family. I moved back okay. home when I dropped out of school. I don't recommend being close. Um, you don't I recommend it. No, I think I mean, it sounds like there's some I, It sounds like she already has decided they're not that close. Right. And so I think like I think for certain people, like if you're really tight with your family and you want to be near them, then that sounds like the perfect setup. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like she needs her her space, her privacy. And so and also getting a deal from the parent like, yeah, that's nice. But now it's kind of like it's going to it could potentially feel like it's hanging over your head and you right. owe them something. You owe them your time or um, your company. So. I think just wait it out, find a place that's a little bit far away. Um, did you have, and, did your parent did, where did you have grandparents growing up or did they pat? What, what, what's the grandparent situation? I had grandparents growing up. They were nearby, but not that close. Like my grandma on my dad's side lived like 45 minutes to an hour away. And then my other yeah. grandma was like 15 to 20 minutes away. Mm hmm. Um, no. And it's nice because then you you like make a plan to go over. It feels more special. You're not just popping in to like kill time. Right. I had grandparents in Michigan. Then I had grandparents in Newton, which is the town next to Needham, which is like from my house, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, even if you're moving quick. And there was no popping in to our house. We could pop into their house. But they weren't going to pop into ours. But that was more about the dynamic between my grandmother and my dad. And their dynamic was, and my parents are pretty good about this too, where it's like, I I got my own shit going on. I don't need you. There's a lot of, my grandmother growing up used to say, if I can't drive, just kill me. <laughs> she would say that. She would say to our faces with no smile, no nothing. If I can't drive a car, Murder me dead in the street. And and I appreciated that. Like, I, I actually, you know, I heard that and I was like, okay, this is someone that doesn't want to be anyone else's problem. Now, there are parents that do want to be someone else's problem, that bathe in it. So I'm not going to give this person what they should do, but I think what you started to do is very important. Things to consider. The first thing to consider is the money situation on the house, which I totally agree on. If they're giving you a deal, will that be held against you? Mm -hmm. Are they the type to say, well, good thing we gave you a house. You won't even let us over to hang out. Like, are they going to use that against you? Are they the types? Because I will say to this person, I wouldn't say no right away. A, 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 you know what's very important? Looking at the ocean. I mean, I, my God, people would, you, you know, pay crazy amounts of money for that also 
having money, having cash, being liquid. Being liquid means freedom, means vacations, means you're not house poor, that you can go away. So you're not always going to have to go and maybe suck the teat of the grandparents for other things. So if they give you money, if you're getting money off of this house, then maybe you can vacation more. Maybe you can get away from them more. If I were this person, because being liquid and seeing the ocean on my list of things would be worth being next door to my parents, who I'm very close with, so it wouldn't matter as much to me. You have to consider the relationship. I would say to this person, you need to have a meeting, a pre-purchase meeting with a very honest talk. How is this going to work with you being next door about boundaries? Are you coming over every day? How are we going to work this out? Because here's the other thing. You, they're married. Maybe they have kids. You got babysitters right next door. This is going to help them more than I, – I see this as like a win. Like if my parents had a house – my parents, they had a house next door and were like, here – you know, take it at cost or whatever, you know, you know, make me whole and I'll do no upsell on you. I'm kind of, I'm in on that offer. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah, I think there's, yeah. Cause in my head, I was looking at like the positive side and the negative side. And my other thing was like, that does sound like a great deal. And that would right. be hard to pass up on, but there would need to be some communication so that way you don't have like your your dad or grandparents or whatever coming over in their boxers, you know, asking right. for milk. I, to, to me, this is fun. I grew up, you know, I didn't have a big family. I had a younger brother and two parents. But like, to me, this makes it like sitcom-ish. You're Ray Romano. You're everybody loves Raymond. Like, there's something to this that is a fun adventure. I also will say to this person, what the relationship is today will not be what this relationship will be five, 10 years from now, if you're neighbors. Because if you're neighbors, you're going to talk to your mother-in-law in ways you didn't even think were possible. You're going to be so much more honest with them than you, you're, there's no tiptoe. It things The dynamic is going to change, which can actually, to me, works in her favor because now you're more comfortable, you know, fights will be had. There's no, you know, you will talk things out because you're sharing a fence. Yeah, the comfortability uh uh gets real heightened when you're right. right next door i i guess my thing is if i was to think about it this way would i want ten thousand extra dollars in the bank to have to deal with you know an older you know grandparent that i have to deal with like a like a like a, someone else's parents and I think I would. I'd be okay with that. I have a, I have a lot of patience for that, and I and it depends on how much, you know. They, I. It's funny because she part of her email is very important. Where she's like, when the dad goes away, she's always calling us. It's like, okay, so you know she's a little needy. How will that work for her? Yeah, and another good thing to consider: how old are these people? Are they going to be your neighbors for very long? Right. When are they going to die? When, when, how, how do we get rid of these people? You know, <laughs> that's, when, is, when is that coming down the chute? Yeah, that's that's fair, too. I just I don't know. I, I if I you know, here's the other thing. You start saving for the you know, the the uh, the second home that gets you away from these people like you're well on your way. You know, the, the idea like free of debt is just such an important thing that gets translated in other things because now you start saving towards the home that you go to to get away from the in-laws and you only get to do that because you're next to the in-laws. Yeah, and I'm assuming best case scenario, like the parents, you know, are are good people. They're sweet mm. people. The only problem is that they're needy. And I think in that case, the pros outweigh the cons. You. Right. You kind of have this like system set up to help you and foster you and kind of take care of you. And it could give you freedom in other areas. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com here with Allie McCoskey. Go follow at not Allie Mac. We're sponsored people. Do your thing and holiday your way with me undies. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Try me undies. I love me undies. I love them. I love them. Super comfortable. And here's, here's what I will say to the listenership right now. Right now, you have a pair of underwear that you're dealing with. 
You don't like them. You don't enjoy them. They're not the first one out of the drawer. It's when all, all the other clothes is in the laundry and you go, I guess I'll wear that pair. Let's, let's be good to ourselves. Let's do a little mental health check. Take that pair, throw it in the garbage, okay? Now replace it with a brand new pair of super comfortable MeUndies. Now you've, you've, you've improved your life. Get your holiday shopping finished early and start making time for yourself with the new MeUndies holiday collection. Their undies, loungewear, and sleepwear are made of the softest, most supple fabric you've ever felt and are guaranteed to bring comfort and joy to all your loved ones. Available in sizes extra small through 4XL, MeUndies has what you need to make everyone on your list smile, so it's a great gift. To get 20, 20, 20% off your first order for free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash JTrain. That's MeUndies dot com slash j train here with ali mccoskey was this a meat cute or am i crazy Ooh, i like this thanks for all your work j train i spend a lot of time in the car and the combo of regular and patreon episodes keeps me going thank you patreon.com slash jared freed if you want to join coffee with j train this week is going to be a star-studded event i got a lot of stories here's the deal Yesterday, I took my dog down to the Greenway to go to her favorite swimming spot. What? This is bougie to- as hell. Right. This dog went to the spa. She has a favorite swimming spot. What? What's her second favorite? Um, when we got there, a very attractive dude with a dog who got along with mine was there. We got to talking. And when I mentioned that I had recently bought a condo up the street, he rattled off my address. He's a realtor, and he said, wow, what are the chances? I sold you that condo. It's a cute little place. Turns out he was the selling agent on it. Okay, I, I'm i not familiar with how these things work or how she wouldn't know the selling agent, but I guess, I guess it makes sense. Okay. I'm still trying ha- to figure out what a greenway is. Like, just yeah, right. a park. <laughs> right. Is it a strip of grass? It. Yeah, I guess. I had to leave in a hurry when some more people showed up because I had somewhere to be. And as soon as I left, I regretted not giving him my number. Now, here's the dilemma. I have access to his contact information and my mortgage paperwork. Plus, I emailed my own realtor to see if he knows what's up. Ah, while I would love how while I love how invested my realtor is in my love life, he didn't have a lot of info. Would it be totally creepy to send him an email? Just say, hey, it was nice talking to you. Here's my number. Do I acknowledge in the email that it's a little creepy? Sitting on my hands for now. Ali Mikovsky, what do you think? I think absolutely. Shoot your shot. I wouldn't right. acknowledge. I wouldn't say like, oh, this. sorry if this is creepy. Don't say that it's creepy. Whenever someone has messaged me saying, oh, this is creepy, I'm like, I never thought it was until you said that. So I would just say like, hey, you know, what a small world. Loved running into you at the park. Let me know when you go back. I would love for, you know, Skippy and Spot to play again. Right. Skippy and Spot got along. I I I I agree with you. You got to shoot your shot. I do encourage not the I agree with you. Don't you this is creepy. Let's not let's not down ourselves before we have to. Yeah. I do believe in hat in hand. I do believe showing up to a situation and acknowledging how you got to the situation. I don't like when people are too comfy. I don't like when someone comes in and is like, hey, how we been? You're like, how did you know I was here right now? You know, I need, you know, when someone texts me from a number I don't know, I can't have, hey, how you been? And then if I write back, who is this new phone? You write the fuck back. Like, I don't want to hear, oh, guess. No, I don't want to guess. I want you to just be straight up with me. And the same goes for a shot, uh, shooting a shot. What I would say to this person, totally agree. They should definitely message. And here's something that I hope builds their confidence. This guy, this realtor, was pretty vulnerable in saying he knows your apartment. I'm Him saying... I know your address and I, I'm the one that sold the, he, that's him opening up. So he knows you have his information. He knows you, it's not really a far trek for someone to go, oh, the email's in the contract. So what I would say is, hey, um, this is blank. We met at the field. You'll reintroduce yourself. Do I, that's, that's more to my point. 
You want to make sure. I never assume someone knows me before they know me. I always, even if I see someone, like if I, Allie, if I saw you at New York Comedy, Allie, I'm Jared. We met over in LA when I did that show with you. Good to see you again. I let them off the hook. And I think that's what she needs to do. So, and because I think, especially from my perspective, when I get shots taken at me, when I, like I'll have women DM me, they'll shoot their shot. Nothing bothers me more than a half shot because they did it for them and not really to make it happen. They're so afraid of getting turned down that they just half do it. So to this person, I agree with Allie. Send the email. Hey, not sure if we remember. We met at the park. It was really nice talking with you. Skippy and Spock got along so well. Uh, I wanted to make sure you had my information. And then you write, I'd love to get a drink sometime if you're up for it. See, that's the part that I would I would not include. I would keep it light and casual. I would do the beginning part of that. I would say Skippy and Spot, you know, got along so well. Mm -hmm. um, let me know when's a good time to, you know, set up a doggy play date again. And then I'm out on that. We disagree. I'm sorry, because here's the thing. This is that's a half shot. You but this person, the emailer needs to be turned down. As much mm -hmm. as they need the, this emailer, she's attracted. She wants a date. Ask for what you want and you might not get it, but at least you can take your mind off it. My only issue and the reason I'm coming back at you a little bit is because she goes, oh, doggy date. Now she's writing into me two weeks from now going, so does he just want a dog friend? You know, like. <laughs> but I would say like, I, the reason why I say that is because sometimes when I initially meet someone, I'm like, I'm going to marry this person. I'm picturing yeah. our lives and our kids. And then I hang out with them a second time. And I was like, oh, I was just like mesmerized by who I thought they were. So that's why I'm like, set up the doggy play date. Go with the intention, if it's going well, to end the doggy play date by being like, this was so fun. I would love to grab a drink without Skippy and Spot. See, uh, to me, that's the purpose of the drink. You know, like, why are we half, you know, I, I don't understand the, For me, why would you, I understand, I understand the idea of like, oh, I might not like this person, but like, yeah, that's, that's the point of the first date. The point of the first date isn't to be in love again. It's to go, do I like this person still? I just don't like the pressure of a first date. It feels very contrived. It feels like, oh, this is the date. To contrived. She like went through the mortgage you know, contract to find this whole thing is contrived. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. I think both options are valid. No, valid. Bo both are valid. Both are an option. I would say if they go with your option, I am definitely going to get another email. So I went to the dog park and I don't know if he knows that I like him or not. And I'm like, yeah. and so I agree with you though. There's a long way and there's a short way to getting some knowledge on the situation. I told, but I, I grew both ways are fine and dandy. My advice is for the shy girls, the, the, for the shy lasses out there. Yeah. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com here with Allie Makovsky at not Allie Mac. Go follow right now. Coming to DC, Philly, Illinois, Austin, Allie Makovsky.com. No perfect living choices. Okay, a lot of, lot of, you know, real estate talk today. Yeah, I thought it was going to be more like relationship. I was we'll hoping get to. Them. Okay, I wanted to like you know either break up a couple or get a couple married. We got a couple coming up. Don't worry, we'll get we'll we'll find love here on this podcast. Exactly. Um, dear Jared and esteemed guests, feather feather, I need some help making a decision. I've been listening to your podcast for a while and have heard you give some pretty legit advice. I'm having a hard time making a decision, so who better to ask than Papa JT and Ali Makovsky? Okay, I'm a 26 year old female living in a big city. Currently, I live in a three bedroom, two bath apartment with my best friend. Our current apartment is perfect, she writes in all caps. It's in a safe neighborhood, has in-unit laundry and dishwasher. Ooh, clean, huge square footage, allows my cat free street parking. We live on the top floor and can't hear the neighbors. It's a five-minute bus ride from work and is wildly affordable. It's like the perfect living situation. 
Our landlord is a nice older lesbian who fixes things as soon as you text her. Oh, my God, they're living in heaven and doesn't care if I pay rent a few days late. And to top it all off, there's a 180 degree view of the water and city skyline. I can't understate how much I love this apartment. Unfortunately, my roommate just got engaged and is ditching me for her man and a house in a different state, leaving me left to make a decision between three less than perfect living options. Okay, you ready for the three? Mm -hmm. My boyfriend has offered to move in with me. By the time his lease is up, we will have been dating each other exactly one year. This is my first ever boyfriend. And while it's really going well, and we basically spent every night together moving in after only a year, feels a bit rushed. Mostly, I'm worried about reaching a point where we would break up. Uh, but... Being stuck in a lease keeps us together, or worse, we break up and have to live together. I also know that he would propose to me today if I said I was ready. To uh, ready, so moving in for mostly logistical reasons from my end seems like a bad idea. And I don't know how I would handle all the annoying comments from friends and family about it being too soon. What do you think of that option, Allie? Are you seeing anybody, Allie? Yeah, this one, I was hoping that you would offer your insight on this because I'm kind of in the same predicament predicament with my boyfriend really um yeah so i was like trying to be you know a, a third party unbiased observer of her situation and it's very difficult yeah i don't know what to do that's tough what's the situation with your boyfriend because she gives two other options um i haven't gotten to those yet but i i do have an opinion on this the, the the problem, the only thing she wrote that really stuck out to me as a reason not to do it with the boyfriend is I know he would propose to me today if I said I was ready. So moving in for mostly logistical reasons from my end. It sounds like she's not sure about the relationship and moving in would send a sign that like you are moving forward. Not Maybe not towards engagement, but that you're getting closer in the relationship. And if I... And I'm speaking from my own experience. If I could go back and talk to myself, I moved in with a girlfriend um, thinking I moved in with a girlfriend because I was ready to move in, but it was like this, okay, let's see how this goes. And I would say, I don't, I don't think I would have done it that way again. I don't think let's see how this goes is really a fun way to move in with someone. And I'm saying that that's my fault. Like I, I, but I also, I wouldn't take it back. But I would also say that, like, how I would make the decision today is different than how I would make the decision before. And so when I hear, like, logistical reasons is why I'm moving in, it's like, I don't know if that's really a good mix with a relationship. What's your situation, Allie? My situation is fairly similar. Me and my boyfriend, we've been together for almost two years, and mm. we spend pretty much every night together, but we don't, like, technically live together but we're thinking of move. We're very seriously thinking of moving to New York. So it's one of those things where it's like, should we move in first in LA mm -hmm. and then move to New York? Like if it works in LA um, or should we just like jump the gun and move in in New York? And it is a scary thought of like, what if it doesn't work out? And then we're just on this lease together. But at the Here's same what time, I, as, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry. At the same time, though, I'm also like, OK, if it doesn't work out, worst case scenario, one of us moves out. We you know, I'm I'm at the age where if a major life change happens like that, I can bounce back fairly quickly and I can learn from it. And it's an experience and whatever. But um, it's Darwinism. You're going to survive. I, I mean, I'm speaking from the other side of that where it didn't work out and you figure it out. Like, I think like. All of those concerns of like, what if it doesn't work out? They're more logistical than you think they're going to be. You know, you start doing the math. If You know, first you break up and then you go, okay, who moves out? Who moves in? You know, then you start doing those things. And it actually, that is like the least of your concerns at that point. You know, like I think the breakup is the hardest part. And all those other things fall into place. So, like, yeah, that's why I kind of ignored it in her email when she's like, what if it doesn't work out? Like, yeah, what if what if your mom and dad don't work out? You know, like, there's things to figure out then, too. You know, like, the, these things happen. 
Yeah, because I'm like, if she likes her boyfriend and she's just like, he's ready for marriage and she's not, but she likes being in the relationship with him. I'm like, uh, her her option of her friend didn't work out, technically. Her friend left and is getting married right. and moving with her hus- husband, you know, fiance, whatever. So she's figuring it out right now. If that happens with her boyfriend, like, she's going to figure it out, find a roommate or move and... Let me go to the two other options she shows. She says, I could get a random roommate. I'm a pretty social person and feel like I could get along with most people, but random roommate still feels like a big risk. Even living with my best friend has had its challenges, so a stranger roommate just seems like it would be even harder. I would disagree. I think there's pros and cons to stranger. You don't have to, you know, it's your best friend. You have to, you have a relationship. You have a history. You don't have, you can't be as honest as you would with stranger person. So I would say that that's, uh, not as a big, I don't think it's harder. I think it's just different stresses. I'm not the perfect roommate either. I like to have my boyfriend over quite a lot. And I have a cat that is super needy for attention. The third option, I could live by myself. I've lived in a studio before. And after living in this huge apartment, the idea of living in a tiny studio again makes me depressed. Also rent for a studio is like an extra $400 a month compared to where, when I lived in a studio three years ago, fuck COVID and inflation. And that's to live in a shittier part of town. So I would be poor and sadder. I also add that it would be fourth, uh, fourth time moving in four years. I'm tired of moving. That also costs a lot of money. I'm definitely imagining the worst case scenario for all three of these options. I realize all three of these options have potential for going well, but it's hard to plan on that. Sincerely, please help me laugh off the stress of this decision. So what do you think is their best option? I have I have an option they didn't list. Yeah, I'm thinking of... Uh... Well, no, that doesn't make sense. I was going to say have the boyfriend move in with you and maybe also get a roommate. Um, Here's the problem. The 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 boyfriend thing. I think comfort is so important. And the mm -hmm. things that they said were like comfortable about it are huge. The the having it's a three bed, two bath, you know, so I, I, I and Perfect neighborhood, great landlord, the the five-minute bus. All of this is like you can't give it up. What I would say to this person, they have they didn't say one option. If I were them, this is the power of social media. I think that they brought up this like stranger. Why don't we, why don't we find someone that's not – that's a semi-stranger? Why don't yeah, we go to Facebook – Mutual friends, weak connections. Let's go to Facebook. Let's go to Instagram. Let's go to Twitter. Hey, I had a spot open up at the perfect apartment. If anyone here knows someone looking to move to this part of my town, please let me know. I think that's their first option. To me, I'm against the boyfriend move in based on my own experience and also like the way they talked about the boyfriend because I think part of that would be leading the boyfriend on. Especially if they're going to, you know, so I, I'm ta- I think in a world where you care for the other person's emotional state, maybe we let that one kind of slide. I think going to Facebook or a place like that and saying, hey, friends and family, had a bit of a change in my living situation. My roommate is moving on to their new fiance or husband. I would love, I, I'm coming here first to put out the word that I have the perfect apartment in this part of town. If you know someone, if you have a friend in the area that might be moving, if you yourself are looking for a place, please contact me. Yeah, and that's not, you know, it's not foolproof, but having a mutual person, someone, you know, move in via someone that you know you kind of want to be on better behavior because if one of you guys is shitty, then that middle one is going to know. And then people are going to talk shit about you. So you're trying to be a decent roommate. It puts both of you on, on check. Yeah. I, I also think, um, with that situation, you now get to judge who comes to you. Like someone might write to you and you go, I would never trust this person's opinion ever. That's good. Now you're getting like a, you're actually getting a pre-interview for the person they're going to try and pitch to you. You get to consider the pitcher. You know, there's, I got Facebook friends. I'd be like, you think your friend's moving in with me? Fuck off. 
you know? Yeah, absolutely. And then you can like, you can stalk their social media. You can see if you have other mutual friends. Like you can kind of get a general sense of who is going to be living with you. Yeah, I think think that's solid. Podcast at gmail.com, Podcast at gmail.com. We're sponsored people. Why just deck the halls when you could be decked out from head to toe? Indochino makes it easy to upgrade your look with made-for-you suits, shirts, outerwear, and more. For a limited time, shop Indochino's Black Friday event for their biggest sale of the year. I love what Indochino is doing. And can I tell you, this is the most perfect gift for this time of year because you don't want a suit. You don't, when, uh, if someone said to me, do you want a suit? I would, what would my response be, Allie? I would go, well, I have to p- try it on first because I don't want, I don't care what the clothing is. Oh, it's the coolest t-shirt in the world. Does it fit? That's my first question. I would rather wear a shirt from last season that fits than the shirt that's in style that doesn't fit. That's the beauty of Indochino. We're going to make a suit that's specific for you or whoever you're giving it to. All you do is submit your measurements online, get measured, in, or you can get measured in their store. That's a fun date to do with your significant other. Then choose your favorite fabric and cut and fine-tune the details. From lapels and linings to monograms and pockets, shop there made for you. Shirts, casual wear, and outerwear to have an entire outfit made just for you. I... There is nothing that improves my confidence more than clothes that fit me. And during their Black Friday event, Made For You suits start at just $329. People, that's insane. Premium shirts start at just $49. It's the season of giving. So give yourself something made just for you with Indochino. Shop the Black Friday event now through November 27th at Indochino.com. Get 10% off all purchases of $3.99 or more using promo code JTRAIN. That's I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com, promo code JTRAIN. Here with Allie Makovsky. Go follow Not Allie Mac on Instagram and TikTok and the Twitter. Spooky season ghost. Okay. Yeah, I'm in. Jared and guest, all the feathers to you. I'm writing from your hometown of Boston. I'm I'm there right now. Hi. What's happening with the spooky men of Boston? I just got back from a date that went really well until the last five minutes. We had snagged the corner bar stools and spent a few hours chatting and laughing. He was touching my leg, my back, and we made plans to change locations for a nightcap. I excuse myself to go to the bathroom at the nice bar before we head out to the nightcap. And when I come back, the mood is totally shifted. He's a little weird, yawning, general mood shift, etc. And I can tell he's ready to call it. A second later, he says he has a 7 a.m. client call. (laughs) The story changed really quick. Uh, No problem, I say. It's a school night. We should turn in anyways. We grab our jackets, walk out. As we get outside, he uh, gives me a hug and scurries off in the direction of his car. And I wait back for my Uber. Here's my issue. We met on Hinge and made plans in the app. I've been making plans in the app and not giving my phone number until after the first date because of a weird experience I had over the summer with a man who turned out to have a criminal criminal record of violence against women. Oh, that's horrible. Okay. I get that. Um, while I'm uh, waiting for my Uber to arrive, I uh, open up Hinge to find a note to fire off a note saying I had a great night and would love to do a nightcap some other non-school night when I see in sub three minutes since we parted ways, he unmatched me. I have no way to contact him and I'm truly left baffled. How did we get from making plans to continue the evening and several comments from him through the night about our next date to him truly disappearing? I'm so confused. I'm 30. He's 39. He seems smart and kind and wasn't going to be acting in a similar vein to the 29 to 33 year olds I've dated in the last few months who I wouldn't be shocked by ghosting by a ghosting from. But this is a full grown who this full grown who pulled a 180 in record time. I'm so confused by I had planned to ask him for his number before we parted ways, but he moved so quick to get out that I didn't have time. Here's my question. How do I prevent or avoid the spooky season ghost? Is it something I'm saying or doing? Thanks for all that you do uh, in keeping the trains running, pun intended, in my dating world and for all the funnies. Can't wait to see you at the Wilbur. Well, I'll see you tomorrow night. Much love. Looking for a boo, not a ghost. I love that sign off. What's going on? What do you think, Allie Mack? 
Oh my god, I don't even know what to think. That's right. insane. I almost like I wish that there was a there was like a recording of the date that I could watch because it's too hard to know. I'm like, I, I don't want to assume that it's her. I'm like, maybe he just like got some weird vibe out of nowhere. And I don't even know if that's something that you can prevent or like that in my head. I'm like, it must have just been something with him, like maybe just something changed or I don't know. I that one's too tough. I'm I'm curious what you think. It's unpreventable. She did nothing wrong. Let's let's yeah. start at did I do something wrong? No. You went on a date and you had a great time. Okay? We can't we can't prevent someone else's behavior. All we can do is react and do the best thing for ourselves. And set ourselves up for success. Her saying I don't give my name out or my number out until after a first date, that is you having an experience, reacting to the experience with the person that had a criminal background, and then adjusting how you act in the future. I, that is what we should all be doing, acting based on our past experiences to act different for the future so we can better be better for ourselves. Here's a, my first thought was like, maybe he thought he was there just to have sex and when that wasn't going to happen, he was like, I'm out of here. But then I thought back to her email talking about the nightcap. To me, you know, that that's moving locations is signs of a good date. Not that she's definitely going to have sex, but that, hey, we're having a fun, casual time. So I don't think that's what it was. I think of the options, one, this guy might be cheating. This guy might, you know, you go to the bathroom, he looks at his phone, 700 calls from someone. He's, either, you know, that that's, when someone goes to the bathroom on a date, that is, to me, that's halftime. You go to your side of the ring, I'll go to my side of the ring, everyone looks at their phones, they take a minute, we take a breather. I go to the bathroom on every date. I make sure I need one bathroom break. I got to get away from this. I got to collect myself, look at my phone. So, when you went to the bathroom, he looked at his phone. Something on that phone changed his demeanor. Is it an ex? Is it a girlfriend? Is it uh, the other person that he's farther along with? Something happened that has nothing to do with this person, That and I, I can't see it any other way, to make this guy freak out in this way. But this is kind of, and also this is how men who date multiple people act. They'll be in on you. Great time. Wonderful. We should do the next date. And then they get, they see the error of their ways on their phone when you go to the bathroom and they go, I got to clean this up. I'm out of here. I, I think that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't seem if he was super interested, it seems like he was having a good time. And then, yeah, something must have just changed. I don't know. Maybe he found out. His mom died and you reminded him of his mom. <laughs> right. I, I I just think that this, like, I understand why she's confused, but I just gave an answer. Something popped up on that phone and we don't know. You're never going to know what it is. But I can say to this person, she did nothing wrong. She, I mean, moving locations, that's a hot date. Corner of the bar, let's go to another bar. Fuck yeah. The fact that you came back and now he's got a 7.15 a.m. meeting Something came up on the phone and the unmatching is backing up my thought on that because the unmatching is him trying to clean up what just happened. So I don't know if it's another woman, if it's someone I, I'm positive it's another woman. I don't know how close he was with that woman. I wonder if she left out a small detail in the email where when she got up to go to the bathroom, she pooped her pants on the way there <laughs> and he was like, oh, actually, I'm not interested the door opened after she left the bathroom he was like i could smell it from here you know he didn't smell the shit i don't know yeah so i i i gotta say like the idea that this is something you can con you can't control everything that's the problem you're not going to know all the information but i i'm trying to think like better for next time no i think keep keep going on the first date without giving the number keep looking on the app to message and give a number after the date 
I, and people are weird about their unmatching. The unmatching thing is not something I've ever done, but I see like on my hinge, like I'll open it up and the number will change. And it's like someone was organizing their life. It's about the person and it's not about you. J train podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Here with Allie Mack at Allie Makovsky or at not Allie Mack on all socials. Allie Makovsky here. I finally got the ick. Am I the bitch? J Train, love the podcast. I've told all my friends, Feather Feather, I'll get straight to it. I recently moved to a college town. I'm in my late 20s and work for the university in the city. I matched with a guy my age. We went on like six dates in 10 days. Also had two additional hangouts, like drinking wine at home, but not a date date, like going out to dinner or activity. So they've had, let's say, let's call it eight interactions. This seemed to be a lot, uh, seemed like a lot uh, at once, but I was interested at first in trying to get to know him, so I went with the date. Six of the eight were initiated by him. However, on our last hangout, I experienced the dreaded ick. I like to think I'm not that superficial, but apparently I am. We were going to a bar to watch a football game, and he came out in a one-size-too-small shirt for the college team, short khaki shorts, and Birkenstock sandals. I despise sandals unless you're at a beach or a pool. I couldn't unsee the outfit. <laughs> he just came out in an outfit, and she's like, I'm done. Um, I couldn't unsee the outfit in... Uh, I couldn't unsee the, the outfit and found it incredibly unattractive. From then on, I felt turned off and, to be honest, kind of embarrassed. Then I started to think about other things that I sort of didn't like in him, like his voice being very country, the overuse of, uh, overuse of we should in conversations, like you're jumping too far ahead, etc. And the ick got worse. I got the ick and texted to end things four days later. I ended up texting him saying this was too fast and that I didn't think it was the right match for me, but I'd like to be friends. I could try uh, tell by his response that he was sort of hurt, but he said he'd be down to be friends. My question questions are one did i jump and act on the ick too fast two is it ever possible to make it through the ick three am i a superficial jerk for being turned off you and jordana have said on you up that you can have one to two superficial non-negotiables i guess the said outfit is one of mine thanks in advance icky vicky what do we think hmm. have you ever experienced um, the ick oh yeah absolutely i stand by her ick i think um yeah, I think when you have such a strong reaction to something like that, it means something like you right. didn't you might not have realized it at first because it was fun and exciting. And maybe he was giving you this attention that felt special. And like, you know, that can all be very fun. But as soon as you get that ick, it's like it's bigger than just the outfit. You know, then you right. start like she was saying, she like kind of didn't really like his voice and mm -hmm. there's all these other things. So it was just, I feel like that's just your body and your heart and your mind telling you what you didn't realize before. The totally agree. The ick, I've been doing a bit about the ick on stage. And so I've thought a lot about it and I've thought about it from like, like, um, why do women get the ick so much? Like I was thinking of that. And it's from this podcast and the emails I receive. It's because you're giving someone a shot. And I do agree. The ick, it's not the ick. It's that is the physical representation of your feelings. And you just didn't like this guy. And this is the moment that broke you. And that's okay because you imagined a life with him in his Birkenstocks and his short shorts and his shirt that doesn't fit. And you go, I tried. Ah, enough's enough. And I don't, I, I, she's, I, I would say to her, the one mistake she made is saying we should be friends. You don't want to be friends with this guy. You're not going to be friends. Stop it. Okay. You're not going to be friends. That's not, stop giving that option to make it softer. It's not a romantic connection for you, and that's okay. And I understand why it feels bad because you're like, the shirt is what got me. I'm really going to break up with a guy over a shirt. It's not about the shirt. It's about I can't see a life with this person, and the shirt is what you know broke the camel's back. Yeah, and, um, and like the thing about being friends, like I used to do that all the time because I'm like, that's the nice thing to do, and it's like, 
what she's saying or what I imagine she's really saying is like, I do think, you know, obviously I thought you were cool enough to hang out with you eight, eight days out of the 10 that I had known you. So like there was a coolness to you and something that I was drawn to about you. I just don't want to be with you like that, but that doesn't discredit like, you know, you outside of whatever we had. We, um, let's be friends means I would speak nicely about you to other people. Yeah, that's what absolutely. it means. And and it, that's a weird thing to write in a breakup text. Like you can't write, hey, it's not a romantic match for me, but I will be a good uh, recommendation to others of your character. Like you can't yeah. say that. Um, it's pretty much like I would I wouldn't be upset to run into you in public somewhere. I'm right. not going to plan to meet up with you in public, but if our paths happen to cross, <laughs> I wouldn't try and hide from you. Also, the person accepting the friendship, that's a horrible friend to be friends with. Like if someone was like, hey, I don't want to be with you anymore, but I'll be your friend. And then I'm like, OK. And then we go out somewhere and someone's like, how do you guys friends Uh, how'd you guys meet well this person didn't want to fuck me anymore uh so now we're friends like that's just not how it's gonna be here's the other thing she asked and i think it's a very interesting question is it ever possible to make it through an ick i don't believe it is for the reasons that we're talking about is like the ick is the last straw the ick is the like and that's why they're so superficial because you have taken them as their person, as their, you've been like, they're a good person. I should like them. They check boxes. And the ick is you going, I just can't check the last box. So I think an ick is an ending, not a middle. What do you think of that, Allie? Yeah, I agree. And I also think like in other relationships I've been in, I've like gotten the ick and I've been in that position of like, oh, that's such a stupid thing. That's such a stupid thing to be uninterested. And I would kind of try and push it further and like continue on with the relationship. Um, And it never ended up working. And then like with my current boyfriend, there were certain things that he did that gave me the ick with other people. But when he Mm. did it, it wasn't an ick. Right. So I and think, it, yeah, I think the ick is definitely a sign. It's it's the end of a of, of a of a book that you got through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, it's it, let's keep let's. Uh, you got time for one more email? We got one more yeah. here. J train podcast at gmail.com. Everyone go follow Allie Makovsky. So funny at now at not Allie Mac dot com dot com. What the fuck am I saying? Uh, I'm I'm hung over and I drank a lot of coffee today. I feel like I'm like can't speak right now at not Allie Mac. Go follow my snoring is straining my boyfriend help. Jared, please help my snoring situation for context. Some nights I snore. It's not like this cute little snore. It's obnoxious. It's, <laughs> it's, no, it's not like a cute little snore. It's this obnoxious, loud, sleep-depriving snore. My boyfriend and I have been together for about four years. Before we moved in together this summer, we lived in my parents' basement together for about a year and a half. He is no stranger to sleeping next to me, but I feel like lately my snoring has become out of control. Many nights I wake up to find him either sleeping on the couch because he's clearly uh, he clearly couldn't bear the snoring in bed or simply up on the couch watching TV because he can't fall back asleep. One night I even woke up because he frustratingly yelled, how can you be this loud when I woke up? Uh, He pretended to be asleep because he felt bad. He never complains the next day, but sometimes he is so tired during the day due to the lack of sleep from my snoring. I have offered to buy earplugs and see a doctor to see if there's any way that the snoring can stop, but he always just tells me not to worry about it. What can I do to stop the snoring or relieve the situation to give this man some peace? Please help. Sincerely, the embarrassed snoring bitch. What do you think? Well, she said she offered to do these things. And if it's not too much of an inconvenience to her, I would say just do those things. Obviously, it's like making you uncomfortable that you're doing it because he's uncomfortable. So go to the doctor, get yeah. your plugs, do whatever you can to, you know, aid your snoring issues and, and go from there. Or, you know, maybe... I would offer to sleep on the couch every once in a while to let him get like a full night's sleep and he doesn't have to get up and go there. But those have are my you, have you been with a snorer or are you a snorer? 
Um, my mom is a snorer. So when I used mm -hmm. to like live with her, I, yeah, I would want to strangle her in her <laughs> sleep. And it was the most annoying thing ever. It here's what annoyed me about this email. And I'm, I am appreciative of the emailer. I think this is a great email. It's great for us to talk about what you picked out is what I picked out. I have offered to buy earplugs and see a doctor to see if there's any way the snoring can stop, but he always just tells me not to worry about it. You're a fucking adult. Stop offering and start doing. If you cared about this issue enough, you would go to the doc. You know, if it was affecting her sleep, she'd be at the doctor. So now they're having this passive aggressive fight because he's going, well, why are you even asking me? Like, I would be annoyed that they were at, do you want me to go to the doctor? It's like, I, 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 you know, I can't tell someone to go to a doctor. Like, I, I just wouldn't, I don't think, I, I guess I would say go to the doctor if I, I, to my girlfriend, but like, I can understand their discomfort when they're being asked if someone should. No one wants to be put in that position with anything. Do you think I should do that? No, I, I don't know. I have no thought. I have no thought on what you should do. You're an adult. I, if I'm this person, like I, I, I'm frustrated. Does that wouldn't that frustrate you that like to get asked in that fashion? Yeah, especially if you're like if you're the one who's like not able to fall asleep and sitting on the couch, and then it's like, do you? So what do you think? Do you think I should go? It's like yes, of course. Right. I would. And be also, it's like that could be. I mean, people with like sleep apnea or whatever that could be like dangerous. So you should right. just go to take care of that because that could be potentially really bad. Yeah, you could be having, I mean, you're, you literally have breathing issues in your yeah. sleep. Like there's there's something to check on. I would go and get in, you're writing in here. So this is a good first step. So I'm not like mad at this person. I'm, I, I think, but it's just like when you add the idea of like, should I help? Do you think I should do the? Yeah, you sound like a fucking grizzly bear. And I can't get to sleep at night and it's ruining my life. Why would you not want to do this for me? Why would you make me have to answer that question? So get to the doctor. Let's figure this shit out and it'll help your relationship. And stop asking questions this way. Stop. Stop. I, I, this is like a, like a, a version. This could be anything. If anyone came out to me and was like, well, do you want me? Why are you doing this to me? That's, that's what I would say. Then. Yeah. That's like when, like, if I ask my boyfriend to, like, clean around the house and he's like, so what should I clean? I'm like, use your eyes. Look around. Right. You'll Be find a fucking adult. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> J train yeah. podcast at gmail.com. J train podcast at gmail.com. Alan Mikofsky, thank you so much for coming on. This was fantastic. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Everyone go follow Allie at not Ali Mac. Hilarious. Coming to D.C., Philly, Illinois, Austin, AllieMikofsky.com. I'm Jared Fried. We're here every Monday with your emails, your stories, your questions. We'll be back next week. 